Hello again, everyone. Uh, it's been just over a week since I broke my poor Land Cruiser. Um, this is the first chance I've had to kind of start in on it and start tearing it down. Uh, just wrapped up work for the day, and I have a little time before I head over to meet Adam at the gym. So, since I broke it last Sunday, I have picked up a complete axle housing from a local guy up in Monument that resells cruiser parts. So I went ahead and picked that up, haven't even pulled it apart yet. It's just been sitting here. Like I said, I've just been working a bunch, had a lot going on over the weekend. So um, my goal is to get this thing fixed and back ready to roll, ready to sell by this weekend. But we will see if that happens or not. Um, also got to fix a family member's vehicle that had a little run in thanks to the ice so I have a little bit of body repairs and a radiator to replace on another car this week so lots going on for me um, but that guy also had a brand new looking it's used but this thing looks perfect uh, mirror because of course I broke that one off on the trail as well so that'll get thrown on as well as we go but for now I've got all my tools still in the back of the cruiser. Um, so I gotta get these out, get them organized, and I'll show you guys, because I never did in the video, this is actually what we cut those tree branches with. It's something I've had in my cruiser, I think my brother bought it for me years ago and I've never used it, but this thing works like a champ. So if you need kind of an emergency saw, look one of those things up I don't even know or remember where he got them but it works really darn well so I'm gonna get these all organized I'm gonna drop the spare throw it in the back to get it out of my way uh, get the back end of this truck off the ground and go ahead and start pulling things apart and see how it looks so here's how we're looking got it up on a couple jack stands I've got a block in front of that front wheel so it doesn't run away without me um, went ahead and draining the fluid out Hard to kind of see there, but the fluid actually doesn't look too bad the stuff that's coming out there You can see pretty clear um, The plug has some metal on it, but again the last time I Had this fluid replaced was shortly after I did the re-gear which is a couple of years, but only a few thousand miles ago um, So there's probably a lot of wear in metal on there, so I'm not too worried yet but I'm gonna pop this cover off and we're gonna take a look at the gears and see what it looks like inside. So here's what's inside this diff for anyone wondering before I get it totally torn down. Um, so this is my Aussie locker. And uh, these are kind of cool because it's so they're not like an ARB or anything where you have control over it. It just works automatically. And basically, if you're taking a turn, it loosens up and will, there's, um, you can see, there's little pins and springs in those slots. Um, look right there. And that allows these two halves of this locker to click around each other. So when making turns, you won't have a tire lock up. But yeah, so I've got that in the center, so I've got to take that out before I can get whatever splines are left of that axle in here. Um, so basically how I have to do that is there's this center pin that runs down and holds everything in. So I have to take the bolt out and then we'll take this pin out and then I'll separate everything, pull this locker out, and then I'll be able to get to the clip that holds the axle splines in. All right, so after a brief struggle, I got it all apart. So I was able to just leave that half of my locker in place with that axle shaft and everything still in. Um, you can see here, that's the actual locker components. And even after all this use and abuse, it actually still looks in really good condition, which I have to say I'm impressed. It's the Aussie brand Aussie locker. And uh, you know, all, this, all the splines still look good too, which is a relief. Um, so 
I need three hands. But that is the broken stub that I just pulled out. And basically, so there's a bearing right there where the light is that this whole housing rides on and that's torqued in with this cap. So I didn't want to have to pull any of that out because it's a pretty big pain to set that up. Um, but the bearing, this bearing looks like it's okay. Um, there's basically just a hollow shaft that the spline runs through and then runs into the splines in the locker. So there's a, there was a little bit of metal, a little bit of scratches and stuff in up inside here, but I don't think that's gonna cause me any issues. I think I'm okay there. Um, I will be flushing this out. You can see there's quite a bit of metal debris down in there. Um, try to get the light on it. Yeah, so there's quite a bit of metal debris. Um, this all came out with it as well. So I'm gonna have to flush that all out, make sure the gearing's all clean. But as far as I can tell, the actual gearing back there and my locker and everything survived. I don't see any obvious damage or anything of that nature. Now I'll show you, here is the other half of this shaft. So that's where that was about there so that was there so you can kind of see how much metal <laughs> is missing and uh, how much is broken off there so I need to find all of that metal as well because um, that's probably still in the housing somewhere now if you look on the outside pretty much this is destroyed so when it came apart um, I lost part of the brakes I lost this brake shoe and all the hardware here. This cylinder um, overextended, so it's probably gone as well. And looking at it, I was hoping to reuse this bearing and seal, but there's so much dirt. I don't think I'd be comfortable cleaning that up and trying to reuse it. And then obviously the backing plate got mangled. Um, so that's all gonna get donored from this guy. Um, so we're gonna swap all that out um, that's going to be my next step here um, i'm starting to lose the daylight already um, it's about 5 45 here so losing the light so i'm going to call it there for now i'm going to set the axle and everything back into place so that's protected i'm going to bolt the cover back on with a couple bolts and get everything cleaned up and call it for tonight and then next go around we're going to pull this entire plate off with all the brakes and see about swapping it over. All right. Another afternoon, just finished up with work again. So we're gonna get back to it here. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing anything with the truck today itself. Um, I just don't know if I'll have time to finish this whole thing this week with everything else I got going on. But today's plan is to go ahead and tear this apart as far as I need to get that axle, backing plate, brakes, and everything off. Um, I'll probably just include the remainders when I sell it with the truck so whoever buys it gets a spare housing and actual shaft. So I'm gonna pop the cover off, pull the brakes apart, pull the inner gearing apart so I can get the axle shaft off. And then if I have time, I'll start disassembling this guy, but we'll see how it goes. Well, Rachel just rocked home from work. I got the cover off to see what it looks like. And the innards of this one, even though the outside has a lot of surface rust, all the gears look great. It's actually still got fluid in it, so I'm gonna pop the drain plug and start draining it while I pull this apart. So unlike mine, this one has the gearing instead of the locker. This is the factory open rear diff. Um, but just like mine, it's got the bolt that retains the pin, and then there's a sleeve around the pin, and this sleeve keeps the axle shafts in place, so these pins, or the C-clips rather, can't go anywhere. So you have to get the pin and the sleeve out and then you can push the axles in just a touch and then get the C-clip out. 
then I can pull the axle shaft out. So that's the next steps. I'm going to start disassembling this while this drains and we'll see what our axle and everything looks like. I found not everybody knows about Toyotas and well a lot of trucks use this and even some cars um, but I've seen some that don't and you just have to kind of hammer these off but with these there's actually threads through the brake drum as I drop that bolt and um, you run the bolts in they hit the hub inside and it'll actually pull kind of push and pull this whole brake drum off yeah, so we're gonna run these two bolts down and should pull this off of here. There we have it. This all actually looks it's in pretty good shape. And actually I couldn't get this side to spin earlier because these brakes were actually a little extended against the drum. Um, so I had to get the drum off so this would spin nice. Um, we'll start cleaning this out, getting everything disassembled. All right, let's took the bolt out. And this is the pin. I just started to pull him out. So we slide it. It's going to kind of drop everything else in. So that's our pin. And then that guy drops out. All right. So there's that's that sleeve. You can see kind of where the side gears right you'll see on these I've actually got little washers on the bottom and then the bottom and top gears and then each side but now with all this apart I can push that axle in it's got a little play and we should be able to pop this ring out okay so there's our c-clip on the axle we're going to pull that guy out. So that's that that is all that holds the axles in in these trucks. In case you're wondering. That's what's actually keeping the axle, the wheel, the brake drum, everything in. And it works great until the axle, you know, breaks right there like mine did and then it comes out. Um Something that's nice about, say, trucks like my diesel, um, and some overseas Land Cruisers even got these, was they did a full float, which has a different design at the end here, so that the axle shaft actually bolts to the end. So if it breaks, all you do, you lose that wheel, but nothing comes off. You can keep driving if you need to without replacing it. So that is the downfall to this style. And it's an upgrade I wish I could have made in my time owning this truck, but it was just a little out of the budget for what I had in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this axle shaft right on out. And there we go. So you can kind of see, I'm going to grab the 
broken stub off the old axle. You can see that my old one broke right at the end of the splines there. So it sheared off right there. And it's still odd to us because typically you would expect the long side shaft to break first because that shaft is going to have a lot more twisting and binding from use. Um, but for whatever reason, my short end shaft actually broke on mine. So what have you, that's, if we would have had one of these on the trail, we would have been able to just uh, fix it and keep going with our day, but I did not have any spares on me. So this is gonna fix her up. Um, so next step, I've got to, so I'm pretty much done here. Don't need anything else. Um, I'm gonna partially reassemble that so it doesn't come apart. And then we're gonna go ahead and start pulling this drum off, or the, the backing plate and all the brake assembly. I'm gonna see if I can just pull it off as one piece. So I had threw the cover back on to keep everything nice and clean as we can. Put a rag in there to keep that clean. Um, disconnected the park brake cable. Disconnected the brake line. And then you can see there's four bolts that actually hold this on. So I unbolted that and I should be able to just kind of tap this loose now. And there you have it. So there it is off. Simple as that. Don't even have to disassemble the brakes. So that will go right back on to mine. I just have to start disassembling the truck now. Disassembly complete. Here is the absolute carnage. There's even a rock jammed in here. But see it just shattered the brake shoe, bent the brake shoe back pad, and mangled, even actually wore through and tore the bottom of the backing plate. So she served well and got the truck out, but this packing plate is just destined for the scrap heap now. Which I have a large one that I need to clean up. So, got our new axle here hanging out with the scrap metal. I won't throw him away. Um, but I'd kind of hoped to be able to figure a way to reuse one of these bearings that I had. But if you listen to this, That thing is completely full of dirt, and I don't think I'd feel comfortable just spraying it out and re, you know, greasing it. So, um, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this seal out, see what it takes to replace this bearing, because it's been a while since I've done one. And uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and order some parts. All right, I gotta set you down again. There we go. So, trying to tell. Hey guys, I just wanted to go ahead and wrap this one up here. Um, I went ahead and I've got a bearing and a seal on order for the cruiser, um, but I wanted to go ahead and wrap it up so I can get this video out. And then once I'm able to do the install on those parts, once they get here, I'll do another video to wrap this repair up. Um, as you can see, the weather is not exactly cooperating with working outside right now. So the cruiser is just sitting with the wheel kind of sitting there as is for now. I've got, and I've got the tube there sealed up, so 
Hopefully nothing gets in the tube while I'm waiting on these parts to show. Um, but once they do, I'll have to pull that apart, get the old axle shaft out, get the wheel and my spacer and everything swapped over. Um, I've still got to get the mirror fixed and then that front uh, steering stabilizer as well. So still got some work to do and I'll get the video up once that's done. But that's it for now. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you soon.